Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation takes us to the southeast, where in the last couple of weeks, it's, it's not been good news. Uh, reports of uh, attacks on police facilities, attacks on police officers, and of course, INEC officers. Over the weekend, once again, another INEC office was uh, attacked and burnt uh, uh, by arsonists. The name Unknown Gunman has also become popular in many parts of the southeast. This morning, we are speaking with Mr. Bala El Kana, Police Public Relations Officer, Imo State Command, uh, to shed some light on what might be going on in Imo State and across the southeast. Uh, good morning, Mr. El Kana. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Um, nice to be with you. All right. Um, it, it's, it's been, you know, one bad story after the other in the last few weeks uh, across uh, the southeast. But, you know, let's start by focusing on Imo State. Uh, the stories of unknown gunmen, the, the attacks on police facilities and INEC offices, uh, what seems to be going on? Well, the last few days were quite hectic. Our special forces were every, everywhere engaging hoodlums in quite a number of locations who uh, staged quite a number of attempts to burn down the um, police stations and other facilities in the states. While uh, some of the few uh, attempts were a bit successful, majority of those attempts were repelled by our gallant men. Just last uh, night, we had a similar one and our gallant men were able to stop that attempt and um, we recorded quite a number of uh, fatality from the hoodlums, not from our sites. We had another ugly one uh, that involved uh, the Ahmed uh, Gulak, yes. who was on his way to the airports and uh, was uh, attacked by those hoodlums. We also swiftly responded. We were able to trace them to a particular location where they were also carrying out another attack and uh, we were able to get them down. They engaged us actually, and uh, our bulletproof vehicles were actually um, sprayed with a lot of bullets, but since it is bulletproof, it couldn't uh, really penetrate to uh, kill our men, but we were able to also win that battle. Ten of them were fatally uh, injured, and the three vehicles they used also uh, to carry out the attack uh, on the Gulag were recovered. Okay, okay well, um, I think we'll, we'll get to uh, Gulag. Uh, Maneta yes. will get to Gulag uh, next, I guess. Indeed. So, talking about um, Imo State in, in particular, you know, looking at this attack on Gulag and all the other, you know, attacks on police stations, INEC offices here and there. What on the streets is that the police actually does not have Imo State in the southeast under control. Do you, do you argue otherwise? To be honest with you, we are fully in control of our public space. Otherwise, there will not be single movement. These guys, we are determined, we are daring, we are out to kill to maim and to disturb the peace of the state, but for the resilience of our men, for the gallant effort of our men, we're able to stop them. And life is still going on in Imo State. We have massive deployment all over. Okay, I, I want to ask about identifying these persons because for you know the last few weeks and maybe even months, uh, we you know we have suddenly named these persons unknown gunmen. Um, so uh, talk a little bit about why it has been difficult to identify who these persons are, what part of the country they are from, what their motive might be. Is there anyone that, you know, was caught and, you know, currently is being interrogated to understand better where, you know, they come from, who arms them and, you know, where their hideouts are? You know, is there any information at all instead of just, you know, calling them unknown gunmen that attack police facilities? And also the persons who... You know, you've mentioned, you know, that, uh, um, you know, killed uh, Ahmed Gulak. Um, have they been identified? Is there any information, you know, that, you know, we can get out of um, uh, that incident? Well, I don't know where the word unknown government originated from because I don't want to accept it. I don't want to believe it. We have engaged 
these guys in quite a number of uh, occasions when they launch attack, we have seen them. We have pulled down quite a number of them. We got some of them alive. They are known. They are not unknown domain. We know them. We know the hoodlums. We know those guys. Those also who killed good luck, we were able to uncover them because we engaged them yesterday and we got them down. So they are known. So, so they are known as who? Some of them are members of IPOP and Eastern Security Network, my brother. So um, we saw a picture of uh, actually a video of, uh, you know, about 50 men who were, you know, walk, walked out of a, ch of a church service. That, that would be in Enugu State, right? Would you say those are part of the, you know, um, members of the IPOP ESN or do we, do we have any idea why those people were, you know, paraded out of the church service on a Sunday? In Enugu State, I have no idea about what happened in Enugu. You can get that clearance from Enugu State uh, spokesperson. Okay. So going back to your earlier stance when you said the, um, the police in Enugu State has control over the state, we, you know, lots of Nigerians don't believe that, to be quite frank, because when you remember incidences like, you know, the burning of police stations, attacks on the, on the governor's house, you know, and, and, and so on and so forth, armed men carrying guns and patrolling the state. I mean, how then can you argue that the police is in charge? Some of those things you see are just things flying on the social media. Come to the street of uh, Oweri, move around Imo State. As I'm talking to you, I'm on the streets. I'm on the street moving around to see for myself what is happening in town. What is going on in Imo States? So it's not as widely speculated. We have policemen all over, other security forces all over deployed, patrolling the streets, and people are going about their normal lives. Hmm. And, and the reports of people being picked up from uh, hostels, I, I saw a few uh, reports like that, that their presence being arrested uh, randomly from their um, school hostels and from their homes. Um, is that part of the investigation? Was that part you of see, police work? There are a lot of, there, there, there are a lot of, uh, of intelligence we are working with. There are a lot of information that are coming in, which our technical team are analyzing. And there are a lot of details out there that we are using. The operation is intelligence driven. Once we have enough intelligence or a particular target that participated in any previous attack or inmates that have escaped from the prisons during the jailbreak, definitely we storm the community and we pick him. These are things we do and we were able to get over 80 of those inmates who have escaped, we have got them rearrested and we have returned them to the prison facilities. Hmm. Okay, so, so quickly also share with us, you know, ways that you, uh, the police force was able to identify um, these persons that you've, you know, called uh, ESN and IPOB uh, members. You said some of them are. Um, how about the rest of them? And also, how did you identify them as IPOB or ESN members? Is there a uniform? Is there anything that you know that you know you could use to identify them? They have a particular emblem, and also talking to them during investigation, they confess, they confirm that they are members of these uh, uh, proscribed uh, groups. Then we also have some criminal elements, also some hoodlums, who also hide under these and come out also to attack. So, which is why I use the word. Some of them are members of. Uh, IPOP and some of them are members of the Eastern Security Network, okay. while some also are just mere criminals also who, who, who are taking advantage of, of this situation. All right. See, I, I need to ask you about this, you know, seeming habit of the police, because there's something we've seen time and time again of arresting people without investigation. Um, we discussed this last week, about five people were arrested, uh, paraded by the police, there was a picture that you know, surfaced on social media. Their hands were tied with their shirts. And people started speaking up, you know, identifying these people to say, I know this guy, his name is Daddy Fresh, he's my barber. Um, I know this man, his, his name is Mr. Ibe, he lives in Bonny Island. He simply came into Oweri for his uh, father-in-law's burial. But these people were just picked up maybe by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I have no idea. 
But can you give us clarity on this particular case and about this, you know, norm about the police just picking up people without due investigation? You see, there, there is nobody that will be arrested by the police and somebody will say, we will not say that he don't know the person. Every single person has relations. And everybody will tell you that his relation is clean. See, you will not know that a madman on the street has somebody until you knock him down with your car. The, the madman is moving freely, nobody cares. Once you knock the madman with the car, you see people coming out to tell you, this is the breadwinner of the family. This is the this is a very nice person. This is this, you know. Look, anybody you see us pick, there is a reason. That is why it is called investigation. Allow the police to investigate and come out with details. The court of, of, of law is also there. The person has the right also to defend himself. If he is not culpable, he will walk out freely. But Mr. Ayokana, in, in other parts of the world, how we see investigations being carried out is that the police has done their due diligence. They have interviewed lots of people. They have their evidence and they go and arrest this person. And when they arrest that person, there's hardly any you know, coming out of it because they have the evidence that pinpoints that this person is guilty. But when it comes to Nigeria, people are just picked up, they're, they're locked you know, in, in police custody for days, and you find out that they're innocent, but their rights have been, have been breached. I don't know. How do you, how do you um, um, justify that? You see, we are quick to compare Nigeria with other jurisdictions that are highly advanced, highly sophisticated, that have all the technologies, that have all it takes. We are a developing nation. We are not fully developed. We are not there yet. Two things are involved. Some of the jurisdictions you are describing are, are, are practicing what we call an inquisitorial system, not the accusatorial system. The first thing they do is they inquire before they accuse. But what we have in our jurisdiction is accusatorial system. We accuse first, then we adduce the evidence. That is our system of law. There are two different jurisdictions. But a system that, you know, has lots of people unjustly in prison, according to many reports we've seen, should that be allowed to continue? Definitely we try on our part to be sure that those we have in our custodies are those who really have a question to answer. Even from the preliminary stage, once we discover that you have no question to answer or you have no sufficient we have no sufficient evidence to hold you we grant you bail that is why administrative bail is allowed hmm. all right i, I want to go back to talking about ahmed gulak because it is currently one of the biggest um, uh, stories uh, across the country uh, you said you know that uh, these persons that were you know that are responsible have been found by the police unfortunately it was a uh, gone, you know, battle that led to their death, about 10 of them, like you mentioned. Um, can you also confirm, you know, from the police report, it says that they are ESN members. So help us confirm that that is true. And then second, um, from the details of, you know, Ahmed Gulak's uh, were killing, it, it sounds like he was singled out. So is there any reasons why the ESN would have issues with Ahmed Gulak? Well, you see, investigation is ongoing. Oh, we they are dead. The people are dead. So how do you how do you conclude the investigation? There are more details. There are more details we are working on, which I cannot disclose on the on television now. But investigation is ongoing. More updates will come up. Okay, but so far with the investigation, even if these persons have been killed, the investigation points to the ESN and IPOB. Sure, it is. Okay, so is, is there a possibility that investigation might say different, you know, when it is concluded? Well, I don't see it coming from that angle, but there are other things we are also looking at, our investigators are looking at, which um, I will give the update as soon as that also is concluded. All right. Um, a little bit more about the ESN and the IPOB. W what is it currently seeming like? You know, does it seem like they are... Uh, now an armed group in the southeast. Is there, you know, ideas who, you know, might be arming these people? 
And also, Governor Rotimi Akiri Dulu has uh, mentioned that there's people who are trying to stoke tension between the north and the southeast, and that's why you know some of these accusations are being thrown left and right. Um, so, share your thoughts on on what Governor Akiri Dulu is thinking. Um, you know that they might be trying to blame certain people to create tension between the north and the southeast. And then also, what exactly is the IPOB currently, you know, like? Or the ESL? Well, it is, not, it is not in my place to respond to statements that he has made. But let me tell you for sure, if you look at some of the few videos of the operations or, or some of the attacks, you will see that these hoodlums are armed. Hmm. They are carrying weapons. They are not ordinary civilians. They are armed. They are out to kill. They are out to destroy. They are out to attack security forces and other uh, people in, uh, in the states. So definitely these are criminal elements we are dealing with. And we are treating them as such. Yeah, you know, but what, what I'm asking is, you know, about the ESN IPOB. You, you've called them hoodlums. You've called them criminals. Um, but is there any evidence that shows that they are, you know, outrightly ESN? Uh, or majority ESN, or is it just a, a you know an increasing number of hoodlums and criminals um, in the southeast that are not necessarily associated with the ESN? Whoever is involved in crime, under whatever guise, under whatever name, and they pick up arm, what do you call him? Hmm. So definitely that is exactly what we are treating them. The whole crime in Imo State are not associated uh, with IPOP or uh, Eastern Security uh, Network alone. There are other also crimes going on, which we are dealing with. All right. So I, I also need to ask you about something. You've been speaking about this in recent time. Um, we know about the IPOP stay-at-home order and uh, what the police you know, has been warning Imo State residents about, or assuring them about their security. But what, what's, what's it like right now in Imo State regarding that sit-at-home order? Well, people are moving out freely. Life is going on in Imo State. Nobody can issue an order here. There we, we can't have... Uh, uh, they are not governments that will declare a coffee on people. So there's no how somebody will sit somewhere and decide to control uh, how people live their life or uh, uh, restrain their right to freedom of movement. That is criminal in, in itself. All right. Well, um, we, we know that governors of other states have said that, um, you know, traders, traders from the East can choose to lock up shop if they want, can choose to stay at home if they want. So I don't know, if that's their own freedom of movement, why, why would the police, you know, argue otherwise? I didn't get that, please. We're saying that, you know, IPOB have been ordering people to sit at home. And governors of other states are saying people can choose to sit at home if they want to. But well, the police is, is saying otherwise. I'm saying, is that not, you know, if people choose to sit at home, why should the police, you know, argue otherwise? Well, if people choose to stay at home out of their own volition, not because somebody out there instills fear on them, <clears throat> that is fine. If you decide you don't want to go for your business, because you want to rest, excellent. But not because someone out there set out to control the life of people, to instill fear in the people. We have a duty, we have a responsibility to protect the lives of the people, to make sure that we create that conducive atmosphere for them to carry out their lawful business, which is why we deployed massively. We have our special forces and we move out there to reassure them of their safety and they have seen that we are out to protect them. Oh, right. Okay, um, so the sit at home order really, um, today's um, May 31st, it should also today. you know, go on today. So can you confirm to us what the situation like is in, in Imo State? Life is going on fine. I told you I'm also on the streets. People are selling, people are doing their businesses. Life is going on. All right. Um, final question for me is, um, at the end of the investigation, um, is there, you know, a likelihood that the Imo State Police Command will be able to give us, you know, 100% clarity on what happened with Ahmed Gulak um, and, of course, share with the, the Nigerian people? That is my responsibility to keep on updating Nigerians on happenings in Imo State and definitely 
once the investigation is concluded, we will come also with our updates. All right. Mr. Bala Okana, um, Public Relations Officer of the Police in Imo State, thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you for having me. All right. So that's... Uh, remember to stay safe. Yes, yes. That's where we uh, draw the curtains today. All about security um, from Aqua Ibom State, the security of young girls, young job seekers in the state, and what's happening in Imo State, in the southeast in general, regarding the whole certain order issued by IPOB, the rising insecurity and all, and all of that. So if you've missed any part of our conversation, please join us at uh, Plus TV Africa on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I am Annette Felix. I'm asking you to have a great week. And I am Osaogi Ogbawan.